So, you want to take your river moves to the next dimension. You dream of glorious verticality. Well, today, I'm going to teach you how to stern squirt. Hey everybody, Seth from the Headwaters channel here, and today we are talking about how to nail your first vertical move on the river, the stern squirt. Getting your boat vertical is a great way to turn your river run into a play run and start getting into downriver play, and by doing that to make your time on the water more fun. So let's get into it. We're going to start out with a couple of prerequisites because there are a few things that you'll need to know how to do and have in order to do your first stern squirt. For starters, you're going to want to have your roll down. You're going to flip over a lot. It's part of the learning process and that's totally fine. But if you don't have a roll, you're going to end up swimming and draining your boat a lot and you're probably just going to get exhausted before you make a lot of progress. So make sure you have a roll down first. It doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be totally bomb proof, but having at least a decent roll down so you have some confidence going into it is going to be super helpful. And you know, also just by nature of doing a more advanced move in moving water, you're going to start to kind of turn that roll into more of combat roll. Uh, as you as you progress if you can you're going to want to be a little bit comfortable on edge already uh, just because you are going to need to dip your edge in order to initiate the stern to do your squirts so just keep that in mind if you aren't comfortable on edge this is going to kind of start making you get used to that feeling of dipping an edge in the water um, so just be ready for that as far as gear goes there's nothing super out of the ordinary that you're going to need but you will need a boat with a low volume stir uh, I recommend either a half slice or a full slice. I wouldn't really go with a freestyle or spud boat just because you don't really have a long enough stern for it to really bite the water there and allow you to balance. The lower volume you go with the stern on your boat, the easier it's probably going to be to squirt, but the less it's going to make you develop that form. So it's kind of a toss up of how your learning style is. If you're looking for a fairly inexpensive and more accessible option, you can find a Dagger RPM. Um, they're fairly difficult to squirt in the spectrum of all the slicey boats out there, um, but it will make you develop good form. And it's a good boat to be learning in in the first place. If you're looking at newer boats that are easier to squirt, the Ripper 2 by Piranha is super easy. Um, they're full slice. The Ozone is pretty easy to squirt as well. Uh, you could also check out the new Dagger Nova and Supernova. Those boats both are really easy to initiate and balance on end. And finally, you'll want to spot with a really good eddy line. If you're not familiar with what an eddy line is, uh, it is basically if you have a pool of water and moving water coming past it, that pool is your eddy. And the eddy line is kind of the space separating those two. And having that space is going to make it a lot easier for you to initiate your start. These are the steps to actually do your first stern squirt. First, you're gonna to wanna to pick whether you're going to peel out of the eddy and into the current, or if you're going to come out of the current and into the eddy. For the case of this video, uh, I'm going to say we're peeling out of an eddy and into the current, because I prefer doing it that way. So that's what I'm going to reference for the rest of this video. Second step, you're gonna to wanna to paddle towards the eddy line with just a little bit of an upstream angle. So your goal should be to come in with just enough angle that you can start to turn downstream. So if you're familiar with kind of ferrying back into the current going downstream, right? If you were coming in, you're paddling, and you kind of want to have your bow just a little upstream so that current kind of picks you up and then you can lean downstream, turn it, right? Uh, we're going to do a similar thing here, uh, except you're going to want to have a little more of the side of your boat facing the current because we want the current to grab that stern and load it as we initiate the stern squirt. However, you don't want to have too much edge going into it because as you know, if you're coming at the current, current's right here, you're coming straight at it. If you just paddle directly sideways into the current, you're just going to catch an edge and flip right over. So we don't want that either. I realize this sounds pretty nuanced and I think you're going to learn pretty quickly in your early attempts that it is. But at first it's going to feel really difficult and then it's just going to click. You're going to hit one and it's just going to be like, oh, that makes sense. So don't worry, don't feel discouraged if you're catching an edge, if you're flipping over, if you're not getting you know, enough of an angle and you're just kind of ferrying across, that's okay, that all happens. If you're in doubt, point upstream a little more than you might think you want to, and then kind of dial it down as you practice. Step number three, 
as you're coming into the current. You don't want to just try and stern squirt immediately as soon as your bow hits the current. You need to wait because the goal is to get your stern to load, right? You want the stern to sink underwater. So if you, as soon as your bow hits the current and you try to throw it, then you're just going to be sinking your stern into the eddy at that point, which is not what we want. We want it to sink into the current. So just as your hip starts to come across that eddy line, go ahead and start dipping your stern because then you're going to spin, right? How do you do that? How do you get the stern to go underwater? That is the big question. As you are coming across that eddy line, you want to look back over your shoulder like you're looking at your drain plug. Just look all the way back. Take your paddle blade with you. Reach your paddle blade all the way to the back of your boat take a big stroke and what's going to happen here is as you look over your shoulder you're naturally you can see i'm kind of doing it just being on land looking over my shoulder i'm naturally kind of leaning right in the opposite direction which is what you want so what's going to happen is i'm going to look over my downstream shoulder my upstream edge is going to start dipping so now the upstream side of my stern is going to start going underwater and i'm going to take this stroke and as i take this stroke and bring that reverse stroke back towards the bow and you're just kind of kind of like let your butt fall back into the seat kind of let yourself fall back towards the stern a little bit you don't want to lean all the way back i see people do that that's not going to help you and we'll get to why in a minute you're just going to want to focus on that stroke and that edge for your first few tries all right and you're just going to follow that through if you have to bring that stroke all the way up to your bow but at this point you should feel your stern start to sink into the water one of three or four things is going to happen one you nail it. You get totally vertical, you spin away, and you're just back in the current spinning, having the time of your life. Not super likely on the first try, but if it happened, that is awesome. I'm stoked for you. That is sick. Did not happen for me uh, that way, my first try or my first many tries. Uh, what is more likely to happen? Either A, you'll have too much edge, you'll catch your edge, you'll flip upstream. It's fine. Totally normal. Hit your roll, get back in there. Try it again, make some adjustments. Maybe you're too perpendicular to the current. Maybe you're giving it too much edge whenever you're initiating. Try giving it a little less edge. Try pointing upstream a little more. Just make those little adjustments and I promise you, you will start to feel that stern sinking. And that is progress. Another thing that might happen, you get vertical, but you flip over backwards. That is totally fine. That is progress. The goal is to get vertical and you did it. We just need to do some fine tuning to keep you from flipping over backwards. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. Next, you might just get a little bit vertical. Your bow just comes up out of the water a little bit and it lays right back down. Similar to the last thing, that is progress. You got your bow out of the water. You're getting there. That's like, you just got a little further to go. So once again, fine tuning, we're gonna get to that in a second. Finally, nothing happens at all. You just turn out in the water, you take a big stroke and you're flat and you just turn. That's okay too. It takes some serious commitment and like this weird, thing in your brain to dip that edge because at this point in your learning process you've probably been told like never dip an upstream edge and you're doing exactly what your brain's telling you not to and that's fine you've learned something you just have to kind of let go of it a little bit so just focus next time on dipping that hip look back at your stern and i can't emphasize enough looking back at that stern is going to help you dip your hips so much and taking that stroke making sure you're keeping that edge down so that your stern catches all right so now you're getting vertical getting the bow up it's coming up out of the water you're stoked but you want to be able to just ride away into the sunset totally vertically like you watch all the heroes on the internet do we're gonna get there so this next step is literally a balancing act so if you're having the issue where you're either bringing the bow back too far and you're flipping over backwards or you're pushing the bow down and you're just landing back flat in the water and you're not actually getting to stay in that upright position and spin around and around or stall out the reason for that is body posture. If you're bringing your bow back and flipping over backwards, what's happening there is you're probably pulling your feet or your knees too close to your chest. So if you think about that, if you're vertical now, you're on the vertical plane, and you're like this, and you pull your knees back, or you lean forward with your upper body, then basically you're taking yourself from that kind of close. You want to be slightly obtuse, not quite a right angle, but slightly obtuse when you're balancing. and when you bring back, you're now very acute, acute, and you're gonna just flip right over. Alternatively, if you go in the other direction, right, you're leaning too far back or you're pushing your feet away, you're gonna get really obtuse and then the boat's just gonna fall down. So 
the fine tuning part is just finding that balance where your balance point is and not bringing your feet too close, not leaning too far forward and not pushing too far back. If you watch closely, when you watch videos of people who are really good at stern squirting, you'll see their upper body is like almost perpetually moving. And that is just them adjusting their balance point. Like, oh, I'm leaning too far back. I'm gonna lean forward a little bit. So then, you know, if they were about to lay down, they can feel the boat starting to go down. They'll pull back together, right? They'll do kind of almost like a mini sit up. That'll bring their legs up and then balance the boat. If they start to go backwards, it's a little harder to recover from, but then they'll kick their feet away and lean back and that'll bounce. And these are kind of minimal adjustments. You don't wanna be extreme. You don't wanna be like push, pull, push, pull, because then you're probably gonna go one way or another. Uh, but just kind of feeling that out and doing little pushes and pulls to keep yourself balanced. Once you're balancing, you can choose if you wanna just stall, if there's a cool rock nearby that you wanna splat, uh, or if you wanna actually squirt and spin around in circles. Um, that's all gonna kinda of depend on what you choose to do with your paddle uh, and your body. If you wanna just stall, it's just that balancing game. You're just gonna sit there, hang out, try to keep both blades in the water. You can kinda of pull them in and out of the water a bit um, to adjust as you need to, but mostly you're just going to be laid back trying to hold that position. If you want to actually spin your stern squirt around, the way you're going to do that, you choose the direction you want to spin. So let's say I've initiated on my right hand side and I want to spin right. Once you come up out of that initiation, you're going to kind of keep your paddle in the water and lean yourself forward a little more than usual. You're going to kind of pump with your blade basically. So you're going to kind of splice it through the water, lean back towards your stern, bring it back, right? Like a reverse stroke, but with the front of your blade. And then doing that is going to start spinning the boat and you're just going to keep repeating that motion. Just slice back, pop, slice back, pop, slice back, pop. And that's just going to keep you spinning and spinning and spinning. And you can go as fast or as slow as you want to. Um, generally the faster you're going with that motion, the easier it's going to be to keep going. Alternatively, you can just pull your blade entirely out of the water and just keep reinitiating over and over. It's a lot more work to do that way, um, but if you're not in a lot of current and you really want to keep your bow up, you can just keep doing that and keep sending your stern back underwater, keep going around in circles. And that's it. At this point, you should be stern squirting, you should be going around in circles. Don't expect every stern squirt to be perfect once you get your first one. It's going to take time, it's going to take practice. Just do them over and over. If nothing else, you're gonna get a really good roll. Like I said earlier, you're just gonna be nailing rolls because stern squirting is great roll practice. Stick to it. Over time, you're gonna really start to enjoy being vertical instead of feeling like you're working at it. I gotta say, spending time vertical on the river, as silly as it looks to some people, is extremely fun and, and very worthwhile to learn. So, hope you'll try it, and I hope this video helps you get there. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you've got any questions about what I've said here in the video on how to stern squirt, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer those. And uh, yeah, if you think I missed something, please let me know. I'm trying to get better at these instructional videos. It's not necessarily my forte, but I've had some requests for these, so I figured I'd do my best here. So let me know if I missed something or if there's a different way you'd like to see these done, and we'll do my best to accommodate. Thanks again for watching. Happy paddling.